that y'all are here. Uh, special welcome to the Courier family. Glad to part of the family's here. <laughs> we appreciate y'all being here. And Miranda and her daughter are, are full-fledged Texans now. They moved, they moved right out here on 312, so they're not far from us. She'll be teaching in the area, so we're glad that they're here. Uh, just a few, th a few things I need to mention. We need someone, and I know Cheryl Ann has been doing this off and on. Uh, in our Sunday school classes, we're going to be responsible for locking and making sure everything's closed up. It doesn't look like that's working. And we've come in a time or two through the week, and this door is going to be in the other building will still be unlocked. Uh, so would anybody volunteer for a little while to make sure those doors are locked? Usually I will kind of make sure these are locked. But we need someone that will just take the responsibility and take that upon himself. Would anybody do that? All right, Charles, I appreciate it. You lock it. If anybody comes out and behind you, just <laughs> too bad. If you need to get the building, you lock it when you get ready. So thank you very much. Uh, just want to remind you a few announcements. Uh, Tops meeting August the 5th, Wednesday, way in beginning at 8.30. Ladies group Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, the men's breakfast Thursday morning at Richie's at 8. Praise and gospel night. 6:30. Yep. Uh, this is not this week. Isn't it? Oh, it's the 15th. The week after next. That's right. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Richie's ladies too. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Richie's and ladies groups the 11th and 13th. I'm yeah. getting ahead of myself. Uh, Kenny Chapel, our church is having the service at the nursing home, uh, Whispering Pines on the 16th. This will be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Native American on the 20th, and we're going to have a, a different fourth Sunday lunch. This will be the Sunday just before the kids go back to school the following day. So what we would like to do, our little Sunday school class worked this up, I guess you might say, and we're going to throw it out at you. We're going to have homemade ice cream and just kind of finger foods. Uh, bring chips, small bags of chips or whatever that the kids can pick up and be ready to take for lunch the next day. Anything, any little snacks like that, finger foods, sandwiches, and, you know, if there's leftovers, we'll give them to the kids if they want them for, some, for school. So uh, let's just do something different. Homemade ice cream, small packages, chip, bring, just bring the whole box. You know, and we'll have stuff supplies for the kids. All right? We'll be hearing more about it later on. Anything else going on we need to mention? Yes, ma'am. The ladies group will be having paper foods. Okay. And that will be on the 11th. That's on okay. the 11th. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Let's pray. Father, as we come into your presence this morning, we just pray that you would you would be in our midst, that we'd feel your presence as we uh, as we come to worship you. We just thank you, Father, for the blessings and the joys and the, uh, the, the things that you share with us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this fellowship, this body of Christ that we have. And Father, I just pray your blessings upon these people, upon this church. I pray your blessings, Father, upon every church where your word is preached. And Father, we just pray that you um, just continually be with us. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're doing things a little different today. We've mixed it up a little bit, and I, I like different. I'm sorry. Come on, light. I, I forgot. I wasn't taking the lighting of the candles into effect. <laughs> We are all dressed up, got her tie, she is ready to go. I know we have been through Ephesians a little bit, chapter 5 before, but I want us to look at this and maybe look at it in a different light and see what God has for us. Uh, this was just, this just, uh, it's just different, okay? I want us to see what God expects of us. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to begin at verse 22. This is 
do what, Joe? I didn't say it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I missed something. It was David? I said, listen up, ladies. <laughs> oh. Yeah, listen up, ladies. This is important to you, ladies. Guys, you'll see where your part comes in. <laughs> Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church. Lost the place. Without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands, you ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of the body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. It's all about relationships. You've heard me talking about relationships with God and, and how that's supposed to work, how, how it should work. Paul starts out talking about a relationship between a husband and a wife. Now we've talked about this in our Sunday school class. We've talked about it. I think we've had a sermon on this a few months back or, or whatever it was. But it's about relationships. It's about how your marriage is working, how it's supposed to work, how, what, what order it comes in. The scriptures talk about the wives submitting to the husbands. It talks about the husbands loving the wives the way Christ loved the church. And how much did Christ love the church? He was willing to die for it, wasn't he? So husbands, that's a big thing on you and I if we're willing to die for the, for the spouse. But it's about relationships. It's about listening. It's about hearing what goes on? What, what's happened between a husband and a wife? Do you have conversations between your spouse and you? Is there a, is there a dialogue carried on? Are you just, we, Mary and I, we get tickled sometimes. We go out to eat and, and we're sitting at a table and we see people come in, especially younger folks, and they immediately get on their phones. <laughs> they're not sitting, they're not talking to anybody. They're not talking to each other. They're just on their phones relating somewhere else but just sitting there in complete silence, having nothing to say while you're waiting on dinner or while you're eating dinner. Nothing to say. It's about that relationship. It's about hearing what the spouse says, what the husband says. It's about hearing all the things that are going on. Communication. Communication. One of the greatest things I did for Mary, she mentioned several years ago her wooden spoons were just getting in a mess I went and bought her wooden spoons I didn't tell her I just went and bought her wooden spoons and she was just thrilled with those wooden spoons you know what she was thrilled with that I heard her that I heard her she said something about taking the sheets out of the mop room and washing them a couple weeks ago I went out there one morning and took the sheets off put them in the for the washing it's just about hearing, hearing what's going on between the two sides. That's what it's all about. She didn't ask me to do it. Just did it. That's the way it's supposed to be. Talk, Paul is talking about a marriage. How is your marriage working? How are things in that relationship, in that life? Are you happy in the relationship you're in? Is it a, is it a drudge each day just to get up and pretend? Have you ever been in a relationship like that where you just kind of pretended there really wasn't a whole lot there, but you were there and there wasn't a whole lot of ways to get out of it? You were just there? Paul is telling us what the husband's responsibilities are. Paul is telling us what the wife's responsibilities are. He's telling us how to make the best of that relationship. He's talking first between a husband and a wife. What is expected of each and every one of us? And he tells us that. But the whole point of this is right there in verse 32. If you look at this, if you still have your Bibles open. 
This is a profound mystery, Paul says. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. What part did Christ represent in this first part of this relationship? Christ represented the husband in the first part. The church, you and I, represent the wives in the second part. The church is to submit to Christ. The church is to be submissive to the leader, to the master. And Christ should be our master. He's talking about Christ and the church. What is our role now in this relationship? You see, if you look at these things that Paul is talking about, our role now is talking about us being submissive. It's not about us leading or guiding. It's about us being submissive. It's about listening. It's about doing. What does God want of us? You ever wonder what God wants of us? You ever thought about what He wants? If we're talking about Christ and the church, I'm going to show you what He wants of us in Mark 12. The most important, he answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is what God wants of you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's it. That's what God wants of us. That's what our relationship is supposed to be in this marriage. It's about loving unconditionally. Loving our friends, our families. It's about how God loves us unconditionally. But we are to be submissive to Jesus Christ. In, uh, in Micah 6 and 8, He has showed you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Talking about us. Talking about the church. To act justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. You want a great relationship? You want a great relationship with your God? You want a great relationship with your family and all this? We begin doing this. We're walking justly, loving mercy. This is what He wants of us. In James 1 and 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. Any idea what it is? To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. That's what God wants of us. You want that relationship with God, that's what He's requiring from us. If we hear what our responsibility is as the church, as the spouse, as the wife, it's about submitting to Jesus Christ. When we do things the way He wants and the way He expects, then we are in that relationship that He wants to. If we do not do those things, if we hear, if we know, if we understand to love God with all your heart, your mind, and strength, love your neighbors, yourself, act justly, love mercy, if we know all of that and we don't do it, we're failing in that relationship. It's as simple as that. It's just like you hearing your spouse. It's like you hearing your mom and dad or you hearing your children and you're communicating. You know what's expected in that relationship and this is what we're supposed to be doing. Most of us, I said most of us, are in this relationship part-time. But we want the full benefits of heaven. We, we are a part of it when we want to be and when we don't want to be, we're outside. But I'm heaven bound. I'm heaven bound. It's about a relationship with God. You know what's expected. You know what's expected of you. If we were serious about that relationship with God, our lives would change. If we were serious about that relationship, the world would begin to change. And it's going to start right here with you and I. I like to hang on to my time. My time's important to me. I like to hang on to my money. 
I don't want to give it all away. I want, to, I want to be in charge of my life. You ever thought about that? But the only thing is, if you're a child of God, you're not in charge. You have a master. You have someone who is, who is reigning over you. And He may remind you of that occasionally. But we are not in charge. We want to be in control of our lives. And sometimes we just can't be. But it's about what God wants of you. And it's about if I want to be in that relationship with God. If I want to scripturally be in that relationship and be who I'm supposed to be. That's what God wants from us. You want the world to change? You want that relationship to be different? Then our lives change. Our whole thoughts about the wives and the husbands of Christ and the church, our whole thoughts begin to change about that. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their, I will hear their prayers and I will heal their land. He's telling us what to do. If we seek Him, if we want that relationship to be the greatest, that's what we're supposed to be. I don't know about you, but I have a pretty good marriage. She may not think that sometimes, but I've got a pretty good marriage. And I want that relationship with God. But I fail at the marriage, I fail at that relationship too. I fail at that relationship with God. I'll be honest with you. Last week when I left here, I felt I let y'all down. I was not prepared. I was not. Uh, I was not. Uh, I, I was not seeking the direction or whatever. The words did not come that was supposed to come, and I let you down. And I felt bad about that. It's about being all in. You ever heard that? You push those chips forward. I'm all in. I know none of us have ever pushed those chips in and said, I'm all in. But if you'd like to just one time, just push it over there and say, I'm all in. Jesus Christ is all in in this relationship. He gave His life and died on the cross for you and I. And we say, oh well, I'll get serious here one day for long. That's not the way it works. I was not prepared. And when we come in here to present the Word to you, we are to be prepared. Angela is to be prepared. Molly is to be prepared. And that takes all the pressure off y'all, doesn't it? No. When you come into this place, you come in prepared to worship. You come in prepared for God to speak to you in some way, whether it be word or song or something that your neighbor might say or whatever. But you come in prepared. You want that relationship to work you have to you have to push it. You have to do it. You have to begin working it with it. It's about that relationship with God. What are you determined to hold out on? What are you determined to keep yourself that you will not allow God to touch or you don't want to allow God to be a part of it? You're just holding back. If you think about that relationship that you've got with your spouse, you remember those old girlfriends? It wouldn't work if you brought her in, into that relationship with you, would it? Those old girlfriends, those old boyfriends, that would not work if you wanted them in that relationship with that, you, with that spouse right now. That would not work. God does not want those old relationships in His relationship with us either. He wants us to put that stuff aside. He wants us to put it back. And He wants us to worship and to praise and honor Him. And that's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. We were put here for the glory of God. And we are to praise Him and to worship Him. It's about loving God. And when you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, you know what's going to happen next? You're going to begin loving your neighbor as yourself. When you have that relationship with God, Everything around you begins to change. Everything around you begins to evolve into a different relationship with someone else. Unconditionally.
It's about being all in in this relationship. Not just holding back, but giving up of everything that God has. Allow Him to be our master. Jim, submit to your master as to your Lord. He's over me. He's over us. Do you know that when we die, this world is going to go on? It's not going to stop. I'm not that important. You're not that important. And God has it all worked out. I want to be in that relationship. I want, to, I, want to, I want to love God the way He loves me. Just to strive to get there. That's what it's all about. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for the church. It's just to love God. To realize the relationship that He has for us. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. We're about to begin worship. Okay? This was not worship. This was teaching. Preaching is not worship. Preaching is teaching. When you pray, when you sing, you're worshiping God. What I want us to do for a moment, I want us to love our neighbors, ourselves. I want you to go and greet someone that maybe you don't know real well. I want you just to shake their hands, hug their necks, whatever. Don't stay in your pew. I want you just to go and find someone that you love. Miss Molly's going to begin playing here in a moment, and we're going to go into our worship service. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.